Was November better than October? Could it be any worse than October? No, surely to God not. And thankfully it wasn't. We played four, we won two, we lost two, we scored three, we conceded five. We got three points from the league. We played in the league and the EFL Cup. Our biggest win was 2-0 against Sheffield Wednesday in the EFL Cup. We got battered 3-0 by Man United. Player of the month was Darren Randolph for some amazing performances. Goal of the month went to Ashley Fletcher in the Tottenham game, which we will see in a moment. But overall, how was the month? Well, we started the month off in a continuation of October. We lost 2-0 to Stoke. It could have been worse if it wasn't for Randolph, who got mad of the match, and we lost 2-0. We then followed up with a 1-0 victory against Tottenham. This is the goal of the month. This is the 1-0 victory. Beautiful strike there by Fletcher. Mad of the match was Randolph, and rightly so. It could have been a, a draw or a loss. Moving on from there, we went to Manchester United and got battered 3-0, but for Gooley put in a, an astounding performance, and we were unlucky to score early doors. We then followed that up with at the end of the month with an ELF, EFL Cup game against Sheffield Wednesday, which we won 2-0, and we saw Fernandez picking up the man of the match with some great performances. But it's now time to sit back and enjoy the goals from the month. Not many goals to look at, only three, but I did like the build-up play in all three goals, especially the Fletcher goal. It was phenomenal. And Fernandez with that cutback for Andy Carroll was phenomenal. He just played so well, and if he continues up this vein of form, he really, really, really could be pushing for a team and taking over from the likes of Lanzini and, and Payette. He really is a phenomenal player. So looking at the league table, how bad is it? Well, the fall from grace is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. 13 games in. We do have a game in hand. We've won seven. We've drew one. We have now lost five. We've scored 17, but conceded 14. Our defensive record is atrocious with a plus three goal difference. But our 22 points. And we are in with a shouting chance. Stoker on 28. But we've got to be honest. We don't foresee Stoke staying at the top of the league all season long. It would just be mental. So we've got to hope that Stoke start to slip up. Teams around us don't pick up too many points and we can go on a sensational run like we did at the beginning of the season. When you look at the pre-season tournament, when you look at August, when you look at September, we are capable of putting a run together. If we can get a two-month run with some positive results, you know, some draws, wins, just don't lose, we can really, really push all the way to the end of the season and hopefully finish in that top four or even better finish in the top two or even if we dare to dream win the Premier League title but perhaps I'm getting way ahead of myself because obviously that is a huge huge ask and of course we do have the January transfer window coming up in just a month's time we just got to get out of the way December and December's going to be a hard month we've got to get up and we need to be resilient we need to start playing better football we're going to start off the month with a tough game at home against Arsenal but of course it will get a lot easier after you're playing Arsenal at home we're gonna have to play Liverpool yes we're gonna have to play Liverpool and I believe that's gonna be a way at Anfield that's gonna be a tough game the greatest way we can start the month off Arsenal Liverpool brilliant but to be honest with you that's what I want after the victory against Sheffield Wednesday I want the opportunity for the boys to go out there and actually build upon that victory get the confidence from that victory take it forward and put it back into the league we then follow up the Liverpool game with a home game against Burnley that's going to be a tough game don't uh, don't don't think Burnley's going to be a walkover then we've got another home game against Hull City which will be fantastic looking forward to that one we follow it with an away trip to Swansea and we will see the end of the month conclude with a game against Leicester City on the 31st of December so Boxing Day you will be away to Swansea and New Year's Eve we will be at oh, oh I was going to say at home we will be away 
to Leicester City. So that is quite a phenomenal month, to be honest. That is six tough games. There is no three points guaranteed, but we need to have a good December. We need to come away from December with some, some positive results to build and go forward because we all know after Christmas, when you enter that new year period, that's when the league live and up the league really becomes a proper battle. It's about what you do leading up to it and what about what you do more importantly after that December period. And of course, the transfer window will open, which will be fantastic. And I'm sure Filippo will have a, a few thoughts about that. But looking at the squad report, it's not too bad. You know, some players are growing. A lot of players aren't growing. I'm really disappointed that Winston Reid isn't growing. But to be fair, Winston has... He's had a funny season. He's played some really good games. And at the same time, he's had some really, really poor games. You know, at times I've taken the mick and said, James Collins or Ginger Pelé, as we love him, is always prone to make an error. But unfortunately, this season, I'd have to say that Winnie Reid has been prone to make one or two errors. And that has led to some really sloppy goals that we've conceded and just generally poor defending, either pushing up too far or dropping back too far, which is a frustration. As you would have saw there, a poor lad, Creswell is injured and it's just devastating. He's such a phenomenal left back and to have him out of the side is just truly guttering. It is truly, truly guttering. Obviously, we've still got Kiate in the side. Hopefully, we can sort out everything with Kiate. As you know, at the end of the month, whatever happens, we will be losing Adrian. Will we be getting a replacement in the January transfer window? Will we wait to the summer transfer window? Will we wait to the following January transfer window? There is so much to happen between now and and all of that period, all of that period, there's just so much that can happen. Hopefully everything that happens is positive. I'm still frustrated that Dimitri's going down with, he's just phenomenal. 16 games, six goals, six assists. You know, he's been involved in 12 goals in 16 games. That is phenomenal, truly phenomenal. And as I said, Edmilson Fernandez is starting to grow. He's starting to come of age. He's starting to have an integral part in the games he's playing, which is fantastic. The same with Lanzini. Lanzini probably feels hard done by because he's not getting a good run in the first team because obviously Payet has got that, that cam roll just nailed down solid as a rock. And look at that. It is phenomenal to see that Valencia is scoring goals for Everton. But will he come back? Will he go out? That's the question. Obviously, at the end of the season, we'll have to wait and see. But the question is, will Valencia stay at the club? We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, until next time, I will catch you later.